Hi everyone, today we're going to learn how to make amazing buttons in Power BI using SVG images. Think of the SVG like drawing with code. And here's the best part, you can make your buttons look exactly how you want them. So, I found this basic code on W3 Schools. It's just the simple blue rectangles with rounded corners. Nothing fancy yet, but it's our starting point. You can also ask ChatGPT to create the same code for you. Now, to use this in Power BI, we need to do two things. First, we add this special text at the beginning. This tells Power BI, hey, this is an SVG image. The second thing is we change the size to width 0 and height 0. I know that sounds weird, wouldn't it make it invisible? But here's the cool trick. Power BI would automatically stretch it to fit to the space we give it. It's like magic. Plus, we still have the rectangle size set on this line. I also changed the color to a nice light purple I got from uicolors.app. That's a super handy website for picking colors. And notice I change all the double quotes to single quotes. That's really important because Power BI needs it that way. Now, let me show you how to actually use this in Power BI. First, you need to make sure that the measure that you've created has the data category set to image URL. This tells Power BI to treat this text as a link to an image. For this exercise, we will use a button slicer. In the button slicer settings, go to images section and add the measure to the image subsection as a field. And don't forget to turn on the set as background option. And look at that, our simple purple button appears. This is our starting point. These settings can be applied for any state of the buttons individually, all, default, hover, and so on. Okay, now let's make it more like a real button. We're adding a borderline around our rectangle. The only things that are changed here are, I move the rectangle slightly, change the X and Y from zero to one. Why? Well, we need a tiny bit of space for our border to show up properly. Then I added two new things, a stroke, and that's the color of our borderline, and stroke width, one, that's how thick the line is. Just one pixel, nice and thin. Now it actually looks like a button instead of just a colored blob. Let's update the slicer by using this new measure. See how the border instantly appears? Now it's starting to look like something you want to click on. Time to make your button pop off the screen. We're adding shadow underneath it. This part looks complicated but let me break it down like we're baking a cake. The filter section is like our recipe. First, filter ID, the name we will use later to fill the button, and height needs to be higher than 100%. Next, FE Gaussian Blur, imagine taking your fingerprint and smudging wet paint. That's what Blur does to make shadow soft and fuzzy, with a standard deviation defining how much blur you are applying. Then FE Offset moves our shadow into the desired location, just like a real shadow falls when light hits something. The FE Component Transfer part makes our shadow half transparent, so we need to set the slope to 0.5, which means 50% see-through. If that would be totally solid, it will look weird. Finally, we use FE Merge to layer everything together. Shadow on the bottom, our bottom shape on the top. And notice that at the end I added the filter URL equals URL drop shadow to our rectangle. That's like saying, hey rectangle, use this shadow recipe we just made. Let me update the slicer again and we'll see how it looks. Wow! See how the shadow makes it look like the button is floating above the page? That's the magic of depth and dimension. Now, we're getting fancy. Instead of one flat color, let's make it fade from light purple at the top to darker purple at the bottom. 
we create a new section called defs. That stands for definitions. It's where we define things we want to use later, like our gradient. Inside, we make a linear gradient. Think of it like a color rainbow, but with just two purples in this case. The gradient goes from the top to the bottom, Y1 to Y2, and it can start a bit lower from the top because I've set Y1 to 20%. Next, you see we have two stops. One at the top, that's light purple, and one at the bottom, that's darker purple. SVG automatically blends the color between these two points. Then, in our rectangle, instead of fill equals with the color hex code, we now say fill equals URL grad1. We're telling it to use our gradient instead of the flat color. Let me update the slicer one more time. Look at that beautiful gradient. It makes the button look so much more modern and polished. This is the kind of design you'd see in professional apps and websites. For our final touch, we're adding an inner glow to make it look like our button is glowing from the inside out. We create a second filter called inner glow. This one is tricky. We're basically creating a soft glow effect along the inner edges. Then, and this is clever, we add a second rectangle. Same position as our first one, but slightly smaller. We moved it in by two pixels on each side. This inner rectangle has fill none, meaning it's a see-through. We only want the glowing border, not a filled shape. That's how we get that cool inner glow effect. Let me update the button slicer one last time. Perfect. And now our buttons have that premium high quality look with a subtle glow that makes them feel interactive and alive. Beautiful professional looking buttons made entirely with SVG code. Now here's where it gets even better. You can create four different versions of this button, one for each button state. That means you'd have a default button for when it's just sitting there, a hover button that appears when somebody moves their mouse over it, a press button when someone clicks it, and a selected button to show which option is currently chosen. That's how you create buttons that feel truly interactive. Now here's a pro tip. Creating four different buttons with all this code for different slicer would means writing it at least four times, right? That would be super annoying. The good news is that you can save this as a user defined function or UDF for short. That means you write the logic once and then you can generate all four button states with just a few lines of code. I made a whole video about how to create user defined functions in Power BI, so Check that out, and I'll leave a link in the description box below. It will save you so much time, and you'll be creating beautiful interactive buttons in minutes instead of hours. Thanks for watching, and if you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. This is Tedian, signing off. Until next time, cheerio!